On today's episode, we're in Gawler, South Australia at my old man's place. We started this lawn project over 12 months ago with an irrigation upgrade that was designed around the putting green install. We killed off the existing turf and replaced it with Australia's newest cooch variety, Tahoma 31. We have seen how it coped with the South Australian winter, now it's time to see how it goes in the Aussie summer as a putting green. We also have some new toys from Milwaukee to play with, so stick around. Okay guys, so before we get stuck into around the grounds, I just want to introduce all these goodies. So the team at Milwaukee have been uh, kind enough to get in touch with us uh, and they've sent us a whole lot of stuff. So they've sent us um, their fuel uh, brushless range. So we've got the body, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, I should, but oh well. Uh, we've got the uh, edger, we've got the whippersnipper, we've also got the, um, the hedge trimmer and an extendable little chainsaw. So. When I've got the correct PPE, uh, we'll be using that on these palm trees to clear the tee box so we can have a nice tra trajectory into the green. Um, yeah, so just want to make it clear we didn't pay for these. They reached out to us and supplied us with all these. So we're going to use them in our videos moving forward. Uh, really exciting opportunity and uh, we're definitely going to push them to their limits. So let's get stuck into this around the grounds. So starting with the Tahoma guys, so last little update that we had, um, I wasn't I wasn't too happy with the colour. Um, unfortunately, I put that well. I put that down to I think because it didn't have a full season to really grow in and root. Uh, even though it established very quickly, I just think uh, in South Australia here, the warm weather was here and then it was gone. Like it was instantly gone like overnight. So now that we've had some nice temps, able to mow it two or three times a week, the colour has come back outstanding. Um, there's absolutely no weeds in it at all at the moment, um, and I put that down to. Uh, a very selective herbicide, uh, read between the lines. Guys, I needed to use it, so I'll leave that at that. Um, yeah, just really happy with the colour now. I'm mow yeah, like I said, mowing it two to three times a week. I scalped it about two weeks ago, uh, and I mowed it three days later. Like, the recovery rate on Tahoma 31 for me is, is phenomenal, uh, and I'm really excited to see how far I can push this going into the uh, growing season. The plan is to get it down as short as I can, PGR it. I'm probably gonna have to top dress it another two or three times. It's, there are still a few um, little slight bumps where on a putting green, you want the ball to roll true, but still not be dead flat. So um, I would like it to be, yeah, just, just a lot more smoother for the ball to roll on. But overall, very happy with the results here for Tahoma 31 uh, moving into the summertime. So we've moved from the Tahoma Green now over to the Tahoma Test Plot. So um, the green's cut at seven mil. This is about at an inch to 30 mil. So it's, uh, I suppose, a lot more residential friendly. Um, it's going really well. Again, that lost a bit of color, but it came straight back once the warmer weather came up. You would have noticed around the green at the front section there that we had some sand. That's because I've taken some plugs out of here to plug in the gaps there, just, just to see how it goes. Um, why not? Got the got the Tahoma to do it. So just testing that out there. So we've taken, I don't know, about 12 plots out of here. And the spreading of the Tahoma back here in the back corner here is, is absolutely amazing. Basically, once the weather warmed up, the Tahoma kicked straight into gear and said it's go time. It's start, it's uh, time to get ready for the season. So really impressed overall with the Tahoma so far. So yeah, like I said before, just really looking forward to pushing the Tahoma this summer. Moving on to the Kaku now, and it's really started to bump into gear. It's, yeah, it's literally just gone from first to second, now it's in third, full throttle. It's growing so far, so that to me says it's renovation time, so still trying to work out how we're going to get around that, because last year we had about 85 to 90 catches full of lawn clippings and scarifying, so we're probably gonna to have to get a bin this time. Um, but overall, it's looking really good. We've got the main area, which I'm suppose I'm gonna call the fairway. Um, yeah, really good, holding really nice color. You got the section up the back here um, under the trees, that's cut at a higher height uh, on the rotary mower there. So I'm gonna over sow some tall fescue in there and make a real like a US Open style rough. But for now, that's holding some really nice color. Um, 
I'm keeping it higher this summer because usually it gets cut all at the same length as the main lawn and it really struggles, I think because of the trees. And so I'm gonna keep it a bit longer this year just as a, yeah, like as an experiment, just to see how it goes. Um, and just the last thing on the kaiku, getting a lot of questions uh, sent in via emails, um, uh, messenger about this white wispy stuff. Don't be too concerned guys. All it is is the kaiku seed head. Um, seed head comes up for mainly two reasons. The first reason being a change of weather. So here in Adelaide, it's been really warm, really cold, really warm, really cold, really warm. You get the idea. So basically that's just a plant going, Ugh. it's just having a bit of a, bit of a stress out attack. Um, yeah, nothing to be too concerned about. If for whatever reason, you're having seed head pop up and it's been a 30, it's been 30 degrees for 15, 16 days in a row. Uh, that's a sign to say, hey, it's putting its hand up and saying, hey, I need something to eat. Um, that's also um, a sign of seed head, not just in Kaku, but Cooch, Buffalo, and uh, Zoysia and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, don't be too concerned guys. And in this, especially at this time of year, it's just saying what is going on with the weather, just like us, it's just got absolutely no idea. Um, so I'll move on to the T-section and the rye apron and then we'll get stuck in with a, I reckon we'll get some, uh, yeah, a snip, an edge and I reckon we'll get the Scotty out and we'll, and we'll cut the whole lawn with the Scotty. And last but not least, we have the T-block and the rye apron. So it's looking pretty good to be honest with you. It's perfect time of year now for the rye. So the rye is really starting to kick along. The apron is looking exactly how I want it to look. Um, we will get some close-ups now of the damage that occurred from the irrigation install and just exactly how rye doesn't creep like a kaiku or a cooch. I suppose um, that's one of the downsides to a grass type like that is it's not going to fill in exactly like a warm season grass, but it really bushes out. So what started off as a little plant has now tillered out into a much bigger plant. So it's filled in an area, but it's just not, it's just not a rapid um, improvement or a rapid establishment that you would get from say a kaiku or a cooch. But overall, very happy. Be interesting to see how this uh, spot here goes in the summer because of the fence. Traditionally, it gets quite dry in this area, but now that we've got irrigation, we've got that little, um, uh, the multi-tool from George, um, so we'll be able to really, really open up this area, get some moisture, air and nutrients into that root zone where it really needs to be. And we've got the water. So yeah, really looking forward to how the T-block goes. And like I said, when uh, I've got the correct PPE, we'll cut some limbs off this palm tree so we can have a clear shot from the T-block to the green. So I reckon uh, I'll get fired up, get, uh, get the snip going and get the edge going and then we'll crank the Scotty out. Before we get stuck into the mowing, guys, just want to my first initial impressions on uh, the the edger and the whippersnipper. That was that was really quite fun. Uh, something I noticed really quickly was over the other battery powers. I don't know if this is a thing or if there's any I suppose science behind it or not. But I felt like especially the edger was was a lot stronger. Uh, it was very lightweight. I was very impressed, but it wasn't that lightweight that you didn't feel you were doing a really 
sort of nice precise sort of cut. So look, honestly, very thankful that uh, Milwaukee were able to send that out and yeah, moving forward, they're gonna be in a lot of our videos because that really good piece of equipment um, and yeah, first impressions have been really good. So um, yeah, just really excited now to get it stuck into a mo. so let's do that. All right guys, so I've just mown the green at seven mil. Um, obviously I'm not gonna cut the uh, kaku at seven mil, so I'm gonna change this to about 22 mil, I reckon. Um, it's just, real, the kaku is really thatchy and lumpy at the moment, so I'm not even sure if this is gonna cut anything, to be honest with you. Um, but we'll give it a go. We'll see if we can get some stripes. I'm not sure if we will, but better than nothing. So I've done this before, just shown you before, but um, just some basic tools. Got a 14 mil spanner to loosen the nut just here, the adjusting nut. We've got a 150mm uh, ruler, height of cut bar, and a hammer because this machine is older than me and just needs some encouragement to move the front roller here. So the idea is, oh, that's pretty bang on. That's, I was just adjusting that off camera, just out of sight, out of mind. And it's at 21 and a half mil, so that is good enough. So the idea is that this part of the blade touches the back roller. This part of the blade touches the front roller. And then this little, uh, this little screw uh, hooks onto the bed knife. And as you can see, we've got some adjusting to do. So, loosen this 14 mil nut. Oh, goodness. This is, a, this is a step that's missed a lot, or it's just not tightened up on a lot of, um, on a lot of mowers. So, I do encourage you, if you are going to, adjust your height of cut, you do adjust um, that nut there. Now, because this machine's old and doesn't like to move, I, I always forget which way's up and which way's down. So I need the roller to go that way. So I'm thinking maybe that it's this way. Yeah, there we go. I know, I know. Shouldn't be doing that, but as you can see now, it's moving. Just needed some encouragement, that's all. That's all it needed, folks, that's all it needed. You know, just, that's all it needed, just some, just some guidance. So we've still got a bit to go. So as you can see now, there's no, there's no play in that front roller, like there's no gap between the height of cut bar and the front roller, and the bar is touching the rear roller. So that to me says it's on 21 and a half mil. So now we tighten this nut up. Should probably be wearing gloves, but yeah. I used to have this photo in tech, and it was this uh, in school, and it was a photo of this angel sitting on a on a uh, on a cloud, and he said to the guy sitting next to him, he said, um, "I used to work construction in 30 years, and only had one accident, and that one accident killed him." So should probably wear gloves. The moral of that story. But anyway, I've adjusted that to 21 and a half mil. See if we can stripe this bad boy up. Bit of uh, wisdom with Adam on a, on a Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up the video here. Um, fortunately, got some stripes going, so really happy with that. Um, some people aren't a fan of the stripes, some people are. Look, at the end of the day, if you're enjoying being in the lawn, you do what makes you happy. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and you sign up to the weekly cut where you get weekly tips, information, and you get a weekly discount code to use on the Lawn Hub website. So until the next one, I'll see you then. Crikey, look at these stripes!